Hey, before we get into it, Hobart and Launceston are the next shows on the 21st and 22nd of June. Then we go to Adelaide where we have changed venues. We've moved venues to a better venue. Uh, those tickets are on sale right now. Uh, Ballarat, Warnable, Shepparton. Then we take a giant leap from Shepparton to London where we have added an extra show because we sold out so fast. We've added another show in London. Uh, we've got Manchester, which I think has five seats left. Holy shit. Then we've got Liverpool and Leeds. These are all happening in August. And uh, we're going to have a bunch more UK cities announced very soon. Loosebeers.com. Get your tickets, support the show on Patreon, and enjoy. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 340 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. Episode 350, 10 episodes away. We're doing it live in Melbourne. Uh, tickets will be on sale now. Uh, if they're not on sale now, they'll be on sale in a couple of days. Uh, check the description. As always, Patreon members get tickets early. Um, that's going to be fun. We're going to do it live. It's going to be sick. We haven't done a live podcast for, for years, like with an audience. With an audience, the last one uh, was three, 200. 200? That could be six years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I think, yeah, it was about four years ago. <laughs> Great. All right. So episode 350 is coming up in 10 weeks. Exactly. Because we don't miss episodes. Uh, but I think the actual recording of it is sooner than 10 weeks. So uh, anyway, check it out. What date were we going with? I think Mitch told us July 20. July 20, maybe. But loosebeers.com will have uh, the, the actual... Uh, anyway, whatever. Guys, it's time to get into it. Okay. Now, last episode, I said that we were moving the official comment section of Spearhead Sundays. Because it's good to have comments on, on a YouTube page. That really does help. Uh, and if you want to leave a comment here, that's great. And I do encourage that. But we, uh, we actually have an official comment section. And that is the Tasmanian Tigers Instagram page. Because I noticed since we became founding members... Where's my sticker? Since we became founding members of the Tasmania <laughs> Devils... Sorry, not the Tasmanian Tigers. Whatever, okay? I'm a founding member. I can call it whatever I like. Since we became a founding member of the Tasmanian Devils uh, football team, because we love AFL here and we always have, uh, we've we've noticed that because they're not going to have a team until, what, 2028, did they say? That they'll have their... Uh, yeah, yeah. 2028, 2028, okay. So from now until then, it's up to us, the founding members, to really keep the passion flowing, to keep the, the public interest at hand to support our team. And the way we're going to do that is by moving the official comment section to their Instagram page because I just noticed that while they have about 70,000 followers, they only get one or two comments about the team uh, because there is no team. So why don't we just help them out by having the comment section for Spearhead Sundays be underneath the post uh, of, of, of their Instagram. And we're getting some... Oh, no. We're getting some great comments. They've deleted them. No, I'm, I still see them. Oh, okay. I still see a bunch. Um, so we've got here... Um, Keelan's my favorite part of the show. Give him some more airtime. 50 likes. Uh, my, my microplastics are tingling. Great episode this week. Go Devils. <laughs> Live, laugh, spears. Keep it up, Tazzy. Because this is the rule, okay? You can comment about the podcast, but you have to mention the team because at the end of the day, we are Tasmanian Devils supporters. Uh, supersize my meal so it can cure my alcoholism up the Taz. <laughs> I really like that one. Uh, very concerned about the size of macroplastics up up Tazzy. <laughs> Think about the poor social media manager reading these that are coming out, the, these comments that are coming out of absolutely nowhere. Hope the microplastics don't affect the team's quality too much. Looking forward to seeing the game in 2028. That's great. Uh, there's a football-sized lump of plastic in my hashtag Tasticles. <laughs> <laughs> Taz Premiership incoming 2052. Uh, that's really good. See hidden comments. Dude, there's a lot. There's a lot of hidden comments here. Microplastics have me enjoying miscellaneous bit at the end. Don't know how to feel. Great episode. Can't wait for next week. Up the devils. See, this is really good. Uh, this is really really good stuff. Uh, very un, un, very unsurprised to hear of the Pope's recent comments. I love the Tassie Devils. Uh, <laughs> That's good. I there's like about that. 100 comments. And this is really good because you have a look at their other posts before we, you know, moved our official comment section. They're only getting two or three comments. So this is this is actually really good for our team. Um, is, here's my comment. Tasmania is my favorite state. I love AFL. Uh, the next top comment is Keelan should get his own chair. Love the Devils though. Let's go Tassie. <laughs> Um, what do you think of my comment? What did you write? I commented, 
my Kramer audio book pre-order got delayed. Looking forward to 2028 Devils. Now, that brings me to my next point. I didn't see that comment because I think that you and I have been muted by the Tasmanian Devils AFL account. Possibly. Now, I noticed this because, again... I'm a founding member of the Tasmanian Devils AFL team, okay? They're going to put my name on the training centre that'll be built in 3057, <laughs> all right? So I want to support my team because I love the Tassie Devils and I love Tasmania. As we all know, I lived there for six months, so now Hobart's in my blood. <laughs> However, I went to show my support for the Tassie Devils Instagram page and I noticed that I wasn't allowed to tag them in my story because I think I've been muted by the social media manager of the Tassie Devils. I pay your salary. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't pay $50 for a sticker to get blocked by the Tasmanian Devils Instagram account. So I'm very upset here. Now, I'm not suggesting that we change the official comment section again because I'm very happy where it is. But just so you know, we are the engagement on your account. So when you look at your analytics and you and you show that to your boss and you go look at the, look number went up that's me all right so I demand to be unblocked from my team could you imagine blocking your biggest supporter do you have any idea how many people I got to sign up for a, to be a founding member using my name many dozens <laughs> perhaps even a baker's dozen. Look, I'm very upset and and all I'm saying is that keep it respectful in this comment section because I don't, as, as we know, like I'm going to be sitting at the very first game that the Tasmanian Devils play in the year 10,562. That's right. I don't want to get banned from our, from the training stadium that I, that I helped build. <laughs> so keep it respectful in those comments, but... It's just, you know, every team has their ups and downs. And sometimes you start with a down and that's okay. All right? Jason Ackermanis was hated for doing handstands, but the people loved him. And if I'm going to be if I'm going to be the mascot and and the best ruckman that the Tasmanian Devils has ever seen, I I can also be blocked by their social media team for being too too avid of a supporter. <laughs> Cuz that's what annoys me is I didn't I didn't comment anything to st- Dis, dis, disgusting. I can't speak. I didn't comment anything disgusting at all. All right. Have a look at some of the comments that I've left because I can still see them. Great job, Peter. How good is our team? <laughs> That's what I wrote. And then another one. Um, what did I write here? I love Tasmania. I love the Devils. Another one. This really gets my microplastics flowing. Love Tasmania and love our team. So I don't understand the issue here. So, guys, the official comment section of Spearhead Sundays is the Tasmania Devils AFL team. Keep it respectful. Keep it relevant to the Tasmania Devils team. But also, let us know what you think of this episode. <laughs> now, I had a pretty crazy time in Queensland. I got to hang out with, with uh, one of my favourite people that's ever graced social media, Justin Ryan. Um, if you don't know who Justin Ryan is, he's a guy... I say he kind of blew up in like 2014 or 15 on Facebook. Um, he's he's very autistic, and uh, people think that he's pretending because he's also a legendary social media troll. And I got to hang out with this guy and figure out a little bit more about him. And man, he's one of the funniest dudes ever that I've ever met. Like if I was retarded, uh, that's what I would be doing. Basically, like. People get, people get messaging me like, dude, is he pretending to be mentally disabled? Which I've always thought is fucking crazy. That's the conspiracy theory out there about him. Is because people have worked out that he is stirring shit on purpose. But they they then believe that that must mean he's not mentally disabled. No, he's, he's like very autistic. But he is also a fucking legendary troll. He loves it. We were hanging out with him. We found out that he lived uh, close to one of my shows. So on our, on our way there, we picked him up from his house. And he, the, dude, the shit he was telling him. How would you explain Justin Ryan, Keelan? Because there's such a rich history. 
Uh, I feel like uh, that that. Uh, I think he blew up because of Marcus Dibble making those videos about him. Mm. And then, yeah, I don't. Really yeah, so a very famous pedophile decided to bully a mentally disabled man. <laughs> and that's how we got famous Justin Ryan. Yeah. Basically. I think disabled troll is a good way of describing mentally it. Mentally disabled troll yeah. is really like he, he, uh, he would do this, these things where he would make videos calling himself Facebook famous AF. And uh, and he had a he had a girlfriend called Gem called Jem Jem who was also mentally disabled, and they would post videos of them making out, and then they would have public breakups and beefs, and they'd go back and forth at each other, and then he would start shit with other influencers, uh, and then famously a pedophile bullied him, <laughs> and uh, just kind of refused to acknowledge the fact that maybe you probably shouldn't be making dozens of videos on on the mentally disabled and sending hordes of people to fucking harass them um but then again we we we, we all know about the uh, the the famous the famously poor judgment of pedophiles uh, <laughs> and uh now he's here basically and he's he's blowing up on tiktok now is the thing because tiktok there is a huge culture of making a retarded guy famous and then bullying him for, for it, and then calling him an attention whore, uh, which I've never, I've never really gotten around. Um, but what I really wanted to get to the bottom of with this Justin Ryan guy is like how how aware of the impact that he has on the trolling that he receives is. Do you know what I mean? Because you and me, we've made heaps of videos making thousands of people pissed off at us. And we can deal with that because we've incited that and that's what's funny. So I wanted to get on with this guy and be like, oh, how much of this is like a character? How much of this is like inciting this type of backlash? And he is unbelievably switched on. For a guy who has to live with an NDIS worker, he's smarter than every single person in his comment section, for sure. I'm like literally going, so what are you doing tomorrow? And, he, and he's like, oh, I'm probably just going to make some videos and stir some shit up. You know, just get the people talking, make some people pissed off at me. You know, get the haters talking, and then they'll get me lots of views and money. He's all in. You know he has an OnlyFans? Oh, uh, what? I didn't know this. Real? A, a real OnlyFans. What does he post? Sex. Yuck. No! I mean, awesome. What? What's that ad with the Down Syndrome chick? You say, you assume I can't have a margarita, so you don't assume serve me a margarita. You assume Justin Ryan can't can't have sex, so you think he shouldn't have sex. You think that mentally disabled people shouldn't be fucking on camera and getting paid for it. You're a, you're that's discriminatory. Oh, subscribe for free. He, dude, I, I I'm not I'm not going to get into specific numbers, but mate, he was showing me screenshots of earnings. Holy fuck. I'm not kidding. Justin Ryan is pulling in bank from all of this stuff that he's doing. But what's also really funny is it's like giving a 10-year-old a giant bank account. So the way that he spends it is hilarious. Like after my show, we're driving back. It's like 1 a.m. All right. We were hanging out all day, having a laugh, kicking it. Me and uh, Julian Woods, the opener. And, uh, and we've got Justin Ryan in the back of the car and we're driving him home. It's like 1 a.m. And he goes, hey, Julian, can we stop at 7-Eleven, please? Julian's like, I don't want to go to 7-Eleven. What for? He goes, I need an iced coffee. He goes, it's fucking, it's 1 a.m. You don't need an iced coffee. No, I'm getting an iced coffee for tomorrow. No, you're not. You're going to get one for tonight. Yeah, I'm going to get two. Can we please stop at 7-Eleven? No, he goes, I'll give you 20 bucks. And then I go... All right, but you're going to have to give me 20 bucks too. That's all right. I'm famous AF. <laughs> I've got 20 bucks for both of you. And so we get out of the car and then he just starts shoving 20 bucks into my hands. I'm like, I don't need, I was joking, dude. I don't need 20 bucks. He goes, oh, whatever. I could give it to you if I, I it doesn't matter. Now he thinks I'm saying he's poor. And he gets all offended. And I go, come on, let's get out. Let's get your iced coffee. I, I'll get a Mars bar. I would like a Mars bar after show. And he goes, oh, yum. And then we go to 7-Eleven and, dude, no joke, he spends $100. <laughs> on just shit. He gets, like, he gets six donuts, six stale Krispy Kreme donuts that have been sitting in the cabinet all day. 
The cunt gets three double XL iced coffees. He gets like a bunch of other drinks and a few other lollies. He spends a hundred dollars. And then I go out with my single Mars bar and I pay for it. And then he gives me, gives me this fucking disgusting look, this foul look. I'm like, what? And he goes, oh, you got a Mars bar, did you? I'm like, yeah. And he goes, oh, I go to Mars bar. I'm like, oh, cool, man. And he goes, whatever. I'm like, oh, did you get that for me? Like he didn't ask. He just bought me a Mars bar. Didn't ask, which is really sweet. Like he's a really sweet guy. But he didn't tell me that he was getting it and he didn't ask if he could pay for it for me. Um, but then he found out that I got a Mars bar and he really wanted to buy it for me. So now he's angry at me. And I'm like, did you get that for me? And he goes, no. I'm like, did you get me that Mars bar? He goes, yeah. I'm like, I'll have it. He goes, and, and he walks past Julie and he's going, oh, Lewis wants to be independent. He doesn't want me to buy him a Mars bar. <laughs> I think he was trying to say thank you for... You know, take him to the show and take him backstage. And you know? he goes, Lewis is independent. He doesn't. He wants to buy his own Mars bar. <laughs> I just did out dead on his OnlyFans. Yeah. I can't access it without putting a card in. Yeah, you can join for free, but of course, extra to see the videos. No, I can't actually look at it and, unless they put a credit card in. Yeah, there you go. And I um, and I I had to make an account and everything. So uh, Julian was telling me he he like like there are other like really really hot female only fans influencers that will go over and fuck him on camera uh for money yeah and Get then and people he do he showed me how many members he has he's got like four thousand posts oh yeah he's got about that many members it's crazy put him on a list <laughs> someone needs to export that list of subscribers watch him <laughs> Hope none of them are working in any in any homes, if you know what I mean. Ah, uh, what? Look, all I'm saying is Justin Ryan's a sweet kid, and I've always hated all these people making videos on him and bullying him and fucking talking shit in his comment section. Um, because he's cool, man, I, and he's really funny. Like he's and he's unbelievably self aware of what he's doing. Like I'm like, you know what he you know what he does. So on TikTok, there's this is how you make. Apparently, you, you can make crazy money doing this on TikTok. They have this feature with the live streaming. So the live streaming you can make some money, but how you really make money on TikTok is you like battle each other. So two people are live at the same time, and there's like a meter where they're they're fighting, like a health bar, and whoever's viewers donate more, that person wins the live stream, and. Yeah. You just keep who whoever's watching your live stream, you keep hundred percent of that money, and whoever's watching the other person's money, they keep hundred percent of that. So it's not winners takes all, but it just in it just makes people fucking donate. So what he'll do is he will he will book two hotel rooms, like he'll pay for them, and he'll fly up some other mentally disabled person <laughs> who's an influencer, and they'll and they'll sit in hotel rooms next to each other. And in the morning, they'll plan out the argument they're going to have on TikTok Live. And then they'll fight. And all these fucking idiots watching, right? The real retards <laughs> are the ones watching these two mentally disabled people have a fake argument. And they'll donate thinking that they're revving them up to make them fight more. That's funny. But they're just lining the pockets of, of the NDIS gang. Right? But here's the thing. Because they are... Also mentally disabled, even though they're having a scripted argument, it almost inevitably always turns into a real argument. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you'll see them and they'll be going great for like an hour or two hours of, of like arguing over who's more famous or who's got more likes or who has more money or, or who's cooler, or who dresses better and all these other scripted things. And then one of them will just say something like over the top and obscenely personal Piss the other one off, and now they're really fighting. And then they'll end the stream, and then they go, "All right, what do you want? What should we get for dinner?" <laughs> <laughs> and they'll go out for dinner together. It's so good. So all these people that are like upset at these fucking, you know, challenged influencers. Who's the actual retard here? It's you. I love him. He's so funny, and he's really quick as well. Well. Be nice. You know what I mean? <laughs> I am being nice. 
If we didn't exist, he'd be Albert Einstein, is what I'm saying. Is that not nice? That's nice. That's very... <laughs> that's nice. Albert Einstein's smart. Right? Um, what was he saying? Oh, I can't say that. I'll tell, I'll tell you. I'll tell you later. It's fucking awesome. Maybe, you know what? We'll do it on Patreon. Um, <laughs> yeah, we're not going to do it. All right. We'll do it on Patreon. Um, that's enough. Justin Ryan's a legend and uh, I, I, I want to do a podcast with him. He's, he's really down. He's really excited. You know, it was like, like one thing that, that I really got out of it was like, fuck, it's so easy to be nice to these people when, when, it's, when that's not what they get. You know, like he was like, you know, just fucking, oh, he's like 20 minutes away from the venue. Let's pick him up and take him to the show, take him backstage, show him what it's like. He can, in, you know, he was fucking stoked. It was really cool. He's, and he's, he's a great hang. I really liked him. He's, he's, uh, you know, it really pissed me off though that he said, you know what he said? It really fucking pissed me off. Really made me angry. You know what he said? What he, he goes, I'm getting my license. <laughs> I said, what? He goes, yeah, I'm getting my license. And I think what he meant was I have enough money to buy a car. <laughs> but but it really annoyed me because I don't have my license. How are you going with that? And I'm older than him. All right? He's out here cashed up from OnlyFans and getting into arguments with other people on the NDIS on TikTok Live, stacking it up. You know, he's going, we were talking about teeth because my teeth are really nice now and they're really fucked up. You know, he's going, he's going yeah, I'm going to get Navir's. I'm like, who's Navir? He goes, <laughs> is that an Uber driver? He goes, I'm getting Navir's. That's I'm like, what? And he goes, I'm getting new teeth. I'm getting Navir's. I said, oh, veneers. He goes, yeah, Navir's. Oh. He's a legend. How's my license going? If, 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 you, if I put L plates on my car right now, mm -hmm. Would you go for a driving lesson with me? No, because my learner's permit has expired <laughs> and I can't afford a fine. If we get pulled over, I'm fucked. As we all know, I've got my son who I fostered, right? Now, I'm very angry at him as well for the same reasons that I was very upset at Justin Ryan saying that he was going to get his license. Now, I never saw this coming, but my son is now 16. Mm. And... When you're 16, you can go and get your L's. So me and my son are going to go down to Vic Roads and we're both going to get our L's. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck! We're going together. How embarrassing. Dude, I swear, if that, if that little fuck gets his license before me, I have to kill myself. <laughs> I have to. That's the, if my son gets his license before me, like that's what I deserve. And, and that's not something I'm going to hang over him like a threat. <laughs> what are you doing today? I think I'm going to go for a driver's lesson. I'll do it. You know, I'm not going to do that. I swear I'll do it. Uh, I'm not going to do that. No. But you know, made a little money from these shows. I can afford 60 bucks an hour for my, my driver's lesson man to come over and Take me for a spin. I'm going to get it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to get it. I'm going to do it. I'll do it. I'll do it if I don't get it. <laughs> Is what I'm saying. This year, man. It's the year. <laughs> Can someone uh, quickly go back and edit up a fucking transcript of a, a, like a hot edit of every single time I've promised that I'm getting my license this year? Me getting my license this year is like, uh, although we've maybe this, maybe the, maybe the thing that was holding me back from getting my license was that, I mean, who am I to get a to be able to be in a car if I can't even do a podcast once a week, <laughs> you know, now that I have done a podcast episode every single week, I think I'm actually in, in the headspace to be able to get my li my license. Or, or to at 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 the very least to renew my expired learner's permit, which, as no one other than me knows, uh, are valid for ten years, and then expire. 
I think that's the real reason why I haven't done, I haven't renewed it is not because I don't want to drive. I've actually been in a really good place and really wanting to drive. In fact, I even booked my, uh, I text my driving instructor and organized a day and then looked at my learners and it had expired. And I texted him, I said, cancel that, belay that order, mate. What are some things you're missing out on by not having a license? Swimming? Yeah, I don't swim as much as I as I want to. I've only done I've only I've fallen off on the swimming completely because I disappeared and I had to do a very secret thing, which you'll find out about it soon. But that fucked up my swimming. And I've only done about I think I've done almost 20 swims not that far behind but i kind of should be at 50 so i'm i'm within catch catch upable range mm. but i'm leaving that range soon now you're, you're, <coughs> you're, you're now that it's june you're mm. very behind you're supposed to be at at 50 well like 52 now fuck yeah i'm at 50 because i i swam yesterday that was my 50 so to catch up i really need to swim three times a week until the end of the year or i'm fucked more than that more than that yeah yeah okay right it's about twice a week that you have to swim anyway yeah so you gotta swim about five times a week yeah okay easy i can do that um <laughs> some good spearhead sunday's math says we're probably yeah. both wrong <laughs> <laughs> no if i if okay no you're right let me do some because quick- if i've done 20 swims i gotta do 80 swims Right, I feel like if I did three a week, yeah. that'd that'd even out to about eighty by the end of the year. Let's do some math. So it, that, it'd be almost eighty, actually. Thirty-one weeks remaining. Yeah. So we got to do eighty swims. Yeah. Is it? Would I, would I go eighty divided by thirty? No, you do. <laughs> you do thirty-one <laughs> divided by three, man. <laughs> Sorry, 31 times three. Times three? What? Yeah, three. There's 31 weeks, right? Remaining. Yeah, so, yeah. and if I do three a week, so 31 times three. That's like 90. 93. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I don't even have to do three a week. So I'm sweet. I don't, I fucking, I'll, I'll think about it later. Oh, okay. <laughs> Maths is hard. Gee, lucky I hung out with Justin last week. Otherwise, I would, <laughs> I would be feeling feeling like a fucking idiot right now. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, two point five swims a week. Yeah, yeah. So there we go. Cool. I don't even have to fucking try. That's like that's like two swims a week, and then once a month I'll do one extra. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, there we go. So look, what am I what am I missing out from not driving? Um, well, I had to, well, this weekend I had to take an Uber from Gold Coast to Brisbane. That was about $200, but, but also that's not that much more money than renting a car. I think that financially, even with the Ubers that I do have to take, I reckon I'm actually much better off than the average person who pays for petrol insurance. Financially. Quality of life wise, far Mm. worse. Yeah. Because I'm limited to, to walking distance of suburban Frankston. So really the only activities I can do is, is go to my cafe and get coffee or, or walk to a dealer and, and buy ice. <laughs> and I only, I only want to do one of those things. I'll let you guess. Um, the ice. Yes, the ice. Yeah. Um, but no, I, I am realizing that, that, say, for example, this UK tour, okay, We've just got a Glasgow date. Might be on sale by the time you listen to this. I don't know. But I'm thinking, oh, okay, so I'm now going to be touring like three different countries in a continent I've never been to if I can't get there by. Three countries. Yeah, because we, th- we think we'll do Ireland. Oh, okay. I think. Um, so if I, can't, if I can't get there by a train, I'm just fucked. Because I don't know. I don't know the ride share situation there. There is actually an app when I was traveling last time where you can put in like, uh, I need to get from uh, Edinburgh to Glasgow. And if mm. someone is driving that way, they'll pick you up. Well, just like a person. Yeah. Like some guy called Navir or something. And <laughs> yeah. And you just pay them petrol money. It's not Uber. It's like different. It's just like. It's more like a hitchhiking thing. Like if I was driving. What's the app called? Murder Me? I don't remember. But I was thinking because I'm going. That's isn't. That is such a. 
that app is an only an app that like six foot two white dudes download. Is I I'm gonna be in England in in September, and I was thinking I'd do that. That does sound fun. Yeah. Although I would have my camera gear. That'd be like, hey, pick me up and fucking rub me. Boot me onto a freezing cold road. Take my camera and drive off. Speaking of Frankston, huge developments. Now, everyone always talks shit about Frankston. Everyone says, oh, Frankston is a bad place to live. Frankston's full of crackheads. Frankston is where people do drugs. Correct. Okay. But you know what? You know what we're, we're doing right now in real time before your very eyes? Gentrifying. Frankston is gentrifying at a rate I've never seen in my life. Gentrification is supposed to take decades. I'm seeing it happen by the day. All right. Have a listen to this. According to recent reports, Walt Disney Company executives have been eyeing off Frankston after announcing plans in September to accelerate and expand investment in parks and experiences. Frankston is going to get a Disneyland. Let's go. That's awesome. Could you imagine Mickey Mouse smoking crack, hugging kids? That'd be awesome. Goofy would be on heroin, slumped over, on a ride operated by uh, operated by someone who's just getting into fights with mums and dads. You know, some little girl will be wearing Mickey Mouse ears. Someone will come up to her and be like, oh, where's mummy and daddy? And she'd be like, I don't know. Some other, you know, how, how can you have a Disneyland in an area where every single fucking teenage girl can't get on the ride because she's pregnant? That's tough. I can't believe that they want to put a Disneyland in Frankston. Can we get a fucking airport instead, please? You know what? Disneyland in Frankston would be the only thing that would that would encourage some fucking infrastructure in this area, like an airport. I there's, hope they build it. There's an airport in Turidan. What the fuck is Turidan? <laughs> what is that? It's like 20 minutes away. Oh, that's like for, for little hobby fucking plane dudes. I know. I know. Midlife crisis. Oh, my wife left me. I'm going to learn how to, how to fly a plane. I uh, just sent you some... Some article stuff on text. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Upper House uh, MP David Limbrick offered another solution. He said that after doing exhaustive research into the best locations in the Southern Hemisphere for a new Disney theme park, he narrowed it down to three potential locations. To prove it is a small world after all, it turns out the best locations are in my electorate. Yeah, I mean, that guy's... Have a look at him for corruption, please. Um... <clears throat> Yeah, I think I think that's great. I would love to have a Frankston Disneyland. That would be that'd be so good. Cause you could have um I mean, could you could you imagine how fucking busy how 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 much a Disneyland would just ruin Frankston? Like Frankston is is about to become really nice. If we put a Disneyland in there, I would have to sell my house. Or maybe I could sell my house to Walt Disney. Maybe they would just buy up like 60 million blocks of land. Where the fuck would you even put a Disneyland? How big is a Disneyland supposed to be? I couldn't think of anywhere in Frankston where, where they wouldn't have to buy like houses, kick people out. Disneyland is 500 acres. Disney World is 30,000 acres. Oh, so are we getting a land or a world? Probably a land. Yeah, we get a land. We don't have the population to support a world. You know what? You know what they'll do. No, knowing, knowing, fucking politicians, they'll be like, "Yeah, sell them the housing commission, get rid of the pores, replace them with immigrants in costume." Thirty thousand acres is one hundred twenty-one square kilometers. Right, that's what they need for a land, for a world, for a world. What do they need for a land? Imagine that in Australia, we'd have Luna Park, two kilometers squared. That's still pretty big if you need to buy a bunch of houses. I would love that. I think that's the solution. Because you know how in, in Disneyland or World, they have like tunnels underneath for all of the staff to like hide when they're, when they're taking off the Minnie Mouse head to have a smoke, right? That's where we move all of Frankston's housing commission. 
to underneath Disneyland. And you can only come out and see the sun if you're dressed as Goofy. That's the deal. You want a crack pipe? Hug a kid. Only let go when the child does. That's the Disney hug rule. Have you heard about that rule? Hugs last as long as the children want them to. So you never stop hugging before the kid. I never heard that. That's the rule. They won't let teenage boys hug. What do you mean? Like when I went, I was a teenage boy. Yeah, and too I, old. I wasn't allowed. You get boners, no hugs. Yep. That's a that's rough. What about teenage girls? Yeah, they're allowed. Bullshit. Nah, you know what? The teenage because because if I was fourteen, fifteen, I'm hundred percent punching Daffy Duck in what I think is his belly, but it would be whoever is in the costumes nuts, like for sure. Like I was the type of kid that <laughs> that you know when they had Harold the giraffe yes come over like they had a little health what was he, healthy Harold or something healthy Harold healthy Harold would come over and, and don't don't do drugs kids wear a condom <laughs> I was the kid that fucking grabbed the giraffe and pulled it off the hand and made the rest of the class start screaming and then from then on no one in my class was allowed to touch healthy Harold because <laughs> I beheaded him inshallah. Oh. So I think that's I think that's that solves two problems in one. Because Frankston Council, I've noticed, has been trying to get rid of the homeless people. Um not house them, just eh. You know when the government do, does that, people are like, oh, there's a lot of homeless people around there. It seems a bit dangerous and and unsafe, not just for me, but also for them. Can we look after them? And the council's like, yeah, no worries, we'll arrest them and tell them to go away. Instead of doing that, we just put them underground, no windows, and they can only come out in costume. <laughs> that And then that's, pro that's problem solved. Mommy, why does Goofy smell like alcohol? I don't like it at Frank's in Disneyland. I wanted to go to the real Disneyland. Minnie Mouse is overdosing. <laughs> I think that's good. It's a small world after all. Mickey and Minnie Mouse are having a domestic. <laughs> that's why I fucking cheated on you when I went on holiday. Daffy Duck's trying to hold him back. <laughs> Don't hit him. <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> I would go. Frankston Disneyland is going to be sick. Could you fucking imagine how how many of the the two cuz that would mean cuz no one comes to Frankston. You'd live here or you pass through. Or you pass through or you you visit your son once when he buys a house <laughs> and then another time when he's recovering from jaw surgery. You know, that's the only time my parents have ever come to my house. <laughs> really? Yeah, I go there. I go there all. I see them all the time. I go to theirs. They don't. They don't come here. Why? Why would they come here? So they can hang out in my living room and do nothing. <laughs> Drive me to to the fucking Vic Roads, right? But that would mean that people would come to Frankston. If we would have tourists, could you imagine the horror they would see outside of Disneyland on the way in around Frankston Station? Just 17 Eshays punching on with PSOs and winning. Mm, that's <laughs> Don't worry, we're stepping into a world of magic and wonder very soon. Driving past abortion clinics, trying to get to Disneyland. There's a fucking queue around the corner to the methadone clinic. Mommy, what are they lining up for? What ride are they lining up for? Comes on the nod on the street. It'd be awesome. I would love it. You'd have Pinocchio wandering around out there, just telling lies. You know, gender swap Pinocchio going, nah, babe, the kid's yours. Her nose gets longer. 
<laughs> oh man, I can't believe I have to go to Vic Rose with my son so we can both get our loaders permit. That's horrific. How long have we been going here? Forty. Forty. Forty minutes talking about Disneyland. Um. All right. Now, Louisiana has introduced castration for pedophiles. We love it. We love it. I don't know. I'm on the fence about the... There's, there's some... Here's, here's what it is with the castration thing for the pedos. Convicted. Uh, and they have, they have to volunteer after they're convicted to get castrated. Because I was thinking, oh, what about wrongful convictions? Because that obviously happens a lot. And... Louisiana's wrongful conviction rate is very high. In, in case anyone's been checking, very high. So you don't want to you, you want to have a spot on conviction rate if you're going to go with the if you're going to add in castration to the mix. Because apparently they have already they've got chemical castration for convicted pedophiles, which again is voluntary. In California, um, Florida, and Texas. Yeah. But chemical is like you show up for your your hormones. Your, I guess your anti-hormones. Right? You got to keep going back. Otherwise, it wears off. Is that like how... You know how like um, some women try the pill and, it, and sometimes it turns their sex drive off or sometimes it turns it up to 11 and they can kind of feel where they are in their cycle depending on whether they're taking like uh, sometimes they'll take a, the placebo part of the pill and they'll get really horny or they'll stop being horny and that's how they know like oh, I'm definitely taking the placebo. Do you reckon like if you if you you're like in between castration appointments you walk past a school and you're like damn fuck I need to book an appointment. This shit's wearing off. I need to up my dose. I should book, I, I should go to Frankston Disneyland. No, I need to Here's the thing. So I was reading about this castration thing because I think I feel like there's there's like something in your chest that's like, yes, that's sick. Fuck them. They deserve that. But I looked into it more and it's actually kind of just a way to give harsher sentences because it's not it's not that you can get five years off your sentence. If you deny the castration, you, if you deny the castration, you get five years added on. Yeah. That's how it works. So it's kind of just a way to get more slave labor out of pedophiles <laughs> from the prison industrialist complex in America. Not that I'm, not that I'm saying that's necessarily a bad thing for them, but it is, it is really funny of like, how, how can we, how can we get more army uniforms sewn by child molesters? I know by offering, oh, that's like, that's like such a non-choice, you know, as well, if you want to get out of prison early, you could just let me ch chop your testicles off. <laughs> I'm staying in. I don't know. I think that maybe castrating people is not good, but also there seems to be no cure for these people. You know, it's, there seems to be no way to turn it off. And they do always get incredibly light sentences. And then they go out and a lot of them reoffend. So it's like, it seems to be like, well, maybe that is the only option. You know what? I like that it's voluntary. That's where I'm at with it. Because if it was mandatory, they would be hit one day with the greatest, biggest lawsuit of all time from the angriest eunuch on earth who didn't do it but got castrated that's what they'd have to worry about so i like that it's voluntary in a way that's like uh maybe that is a really moral good if there is an offender out there who can't turn it off now he's got an option and then hopefully he doesn't reoffend. that's i guess that's good if if you're trying to reduce harm I don't know. What do you think? Let me know down in the comments of the Tasmanian AFL football club's Instagram page. The Tasmanian Devils. But make sure you say something nice about the Tassie Devils. I just posted a comment saying that we're recording a new episode. 
on their Instagram. Yeah. Let me see if I can see that because if I can't see that, you've been muted. I got. Three can you likes. see any of my comments? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can. Yeah. I think that's just because we follow each other. Would di was this their most recent post? Yep. yep. I can see yours. Oh, it's got seven likes. So obviously people are seeing it. That's so funny. <laughs> and this is what I mean. I don't know why I would be blocked or muted by the Tassie Devil's Instagram page. Look at the amount of engagement. No other Instagram is getting this level of live interaction. Keelan can post a comment and it'll get seven likes instantly. We should charge them. We should be charging them. I should be, I have to be a contractor. <laughs> Let's go support the Tassie podcast people. And then another person wrote to you, the plastic in my testicles is buzzing. Okay. I might see why that might annoy them a little bit. <laughs> Keep it safe for work. Because at the end of the day, I, you know, we, we want to continue being the official podcast of the, the Tasmanian football club, the official Tassie FC. Um, it would be so good if when they start doing like events, we got invited as the official podcast. That would be great. See how I worked out if I'm blocked or not is when I go to tag them in my story, look, they're grayed out. It says that I can't T official Tasmania FC doesn't allow everyone to mention them. Can you mention them? I'll see. Cause I also noticed that my comments were getting zero likes. Oh, wait. Um, and I would think that if you're getting seven likes in 30 minutes, I would get some as well, at least one. So see if you can, because I, because you know, this is, this is the only time I've ever cared about AFL and I really want to support the boys when they hit, when they, you know, hit the field in, in 2062. Okay, I can tag them. Post what? Just posted it. Well, I'm putting the finger up in that image. So maybe delete that. Okay. Cause I, cause I would like to actually get unmuted. So maybe what I'll have to do is is I'll have to camp. You know what? I'm gonna put on my Instagram. I'm gonna campaign to get me unmuted, please. That's that's what I would like everyone to politely request that I be unmuted by the Tasmanian Football Club on Instagram. And I think that's where we'll we'll end this episode. Is just is just a plea for the Tassie FC. Now we yes. Okay. Well, <laughs> well maybe don't. Like turn to the microphone and take a have a giant inhale, and then when I go yes, you panic and shake your head. No, don't talk to me. Why do you even have a microphone? I was just gonna say. Oh, so you do have something to say? <laughs> yeah, but I didn't mean to cut you off. Yeah, no, you didn't cut me off. I I could kind of finish. And I said yes, <laughs> and then you panicked. Oh, it's a conversation. I was gonna say, uh, episode three. We'll talk about episode three fifty on the next uh the patreon episode that we're going to record right now yes mitch just sent me the official dates oh good excellent okay and patrons will get early access to tickets we want them in the doors first and uh and we'll also talk about yeah yeah justin said some fucking hilarious stuff but probably it's probably not for this it'll be for that all right that's it hobart launceston i'll see you uh june 21 and 22nd then i do adelaide uh the venue has changed for adelaide so uh look that up you've got an email then we do ballarat warnable shepparton and then we take a giant leap from shepparton to london uh and manchester liverpool and leeds are on sale right now. We're also going to have um, a bunch of other shows announced very soon for my UK listeners. Thank you very much. I'll talk to you next Sunday. I hope you have a shit one. Bye.